So we have now uh, put in our topography. We've established our levels for different uh, components or subsystems within uh, the building. And we now have also established uh, a, a floor with a building pad on it. And we want to add walls to this now. So we're just going to put in some simple generic walls. The easiest way to do that would probably be go to back to the first finished floor here. And we're going to go into architecture and walls. And we'll make these structural walls. They would probably be CMU walls, for instance. And it wanted me to save the project, OK, um, before I went any further. And so I'm going to give it a name. What This is the name that I want you to give it, OK? Um, So start with your uh, last name, uh, and then your dot, and then your second name. If your name's uh, second name is really, really long or something, you can truncate it if you want, or just use an initial. And then I want you to put an understroke, and uh, 2351, and then fall FA19, and then A zero one okay uh, and you can add an additional name if you want uh, beyond that but those first this first four is uh, will when you if we ask you for your rivet file they will organize themselves based alphabetically on your so it's a, bit, a great way for us to store that so uh, your last your last name dot uh, uh, either initial or your first name, and then understroke 2351, understroke FA fall 19, understroke A01, and then understroke, and then uh, introduction. So I'm going to save that now. And so I'm ready to go. So let's go in here. We go architecture. We're going to do a wall. We're going to do a structural wall. We're going to do a basic wall use, and use a generic. Later on, we're going to build these walls as they would be uh, assembled from components. Uh, but right now, we're just going to use a generic wall. And so we're going to make it a 12-inch wall. I'm going to zoom in. I'm just scrolling the middle button on my mouse is the way we do that. And uh, then there's some settings we need to place up here. So how are we going to draw this wall? Are we going to draw it from the top down or from the bottom up? And depth means that we're going to draw it by its depth from the top down. Uh, but I want to draw it by height, OK, from the bottom up. That makes more sense to me, OK? Um, then I want the base constraint to be the first finished floor. So I want it to sit on top of that floor. OK, and then the top constraint, I don't want it to be in unconnected. I want it to go up to the top of the parapet. And you'll see why in just a few minutes. That's the, the top of the wall on the outside of the building. And then there's a two or three different ways I could do this. Once again, I could pick uh, lines, but I'm just going to draw them this time. And then do we want, when I draw this, do we want the wall center line to be on the line that I draw? Or do we want other portions of it? And in my case, I want the finish face on the exterior to be uh, on that line. And so I'm going to click here, OK, and draw. And you'll see uh, one side is being placed on that line. Now, if you're, if you, for instance, let's escape out of that. And let's just start over. If I went from this direction, OK, from right to left, notice that the wall's on the wrong side. And uh, I could, of course, escape and, and draw it from the other side. Or I could just tap on the space bar. And if I do that, it's going to flip so that it's drawing in the other direction. Okay. And so I can accept that wall. And of course, it's chained together uh, because chain is, is checked right here. If chain wasn't, uh, it would stop. And then you would have to pick again. But it, but it isn't, so it's there. And I'm going to go chain, chain, and then chain. And notice it trimmed the walls automatically. So now they've been trimmed together so that we can visually see them. And if we go into 3D view, there's our walls. If we go into the north elevation, we'll notice that, oh, it went to first ceiling. Did I set that to the wrong location? Well, 
that's a good chance to show you how easy it is to edit. Okay, so what I really want is this wall to not stop at the at the finished ceiling, uh, but to go all the way uh, to the top of the parapet. Okay, so I'm going to go back to 3D model so it's easier to see all of this, and I'm just going to select these walls. So I'm going to select the first one, and then I'll hold the Control key down to select another one, the other one, and the other one. And notice right over here, it says up to first of ceiling. Okay, and I should have selected top of parapet. And so I was going to select top of parapet and apply it. And now those walls are automatically extended to the top of the parapet. And that's one reason to set in your levels. You can always change those levels. So don't be concerned about, oh, is this going to be the right level? Well, if it's not, you'll just change it later on. Okay. If we go into north, we're going to see here, for instance, if I wanted the top of this parapet to be 18 feet instead of 17 feet, I could change that to 18 feet and notice that the wall automatically is locked to that level. So it just raised it another foot, made it another foot taller. Okay. So a real simple thing to do. Uh, and, and that's the reason to draw it uh, to uh, establish levels rather than just, uh, you know, unconstrained. Okay, so now we've got our walls in there. And uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about putting a roof on.